Today's sermon came from when I looked at the readings. There was a picture in one of the readings, and it's two people that embrace it in reconciliation, reconciling their differences. And so I, I feel I, my sermon, a time for forgiveness and reconciliation. Remember the reading. In the reading it says, So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser. That resonated with me as I was preparing the sermon. Remember those horrible winds that we had last week swirling around? I don't know if you remember, but I was in it. And, uh, I was on the Altamont Pass driving to St. Paul's Church at about 7.30 in the morning, where a group of us viewed the documentary Traces of the Train as part of Black History Month activities. Has anyone else seen that then? Traces of the Train. Well, I got a lesson in history, my history, and some clues as to how my ancestors got to where we ended up in South America. I got a lesson in how sugar and later rice got to be among the main products of trade for us in Diana. I know, you're asking what this has to do with the readings for this Sunday. Just bear with me. Well, in the documentary, Traces of the Trade, it is told that Katrina Brown, as a seminarian here in Berkeley, California, received a letter from her grandmother who told her that there were direct descendants of the DeWolf family, one of the largest and most prominent slave trading families in New England, and in fact, in the entire United States. Aha, uh -huh. you thought it all started in the South. It did not. This was a huge deal for Katrina, especially as this was the first time she was reading this about this tie to the DeWolf family mentioned in a letter. And she wanted to know what truth there was to this piece of information and how did she fit into this cover-up. Before she left this earth, Katrina's grandmother wanted her grandchildren to know about their family history as most of our families do. The many writers, the ministers, the artists that were a part of their bloodline. And now the biggest slave traders in the history of the U.S. was also part of this very famous and well-to-do family. Then as Katrina did some reflection, don't forget she's a seminarian, so she does a lot of reflection. She realized that she had known of this piece of information previously at some level, but had buried this knowledge in the recesses of her mind, as most Americans who were part of this cadre of slave traders and slave owners did, and as some continue to do today. She knew that for her to be true to God, the God she served, and to be called and her calling as a priest, she had to delve further into the piece, this piece of her family history. However, instead of focusing on the unhealthy guilt that, some, that such knowledge can bring to a family, Katrina more con was more conscious of the privileges that she and other members of her family had inherited as a result of their wealth brought about from this line of business, the buying and selling of slaves for profit. After all, she was not the one who did the harm. But she quickly realized that she needed to focus on how she could make a difference in the lives of the others. So, coming from a place of being inspired, rather than feeling overburdened with guilt and shame. A place of reconciliation, here it goes. And asking for forgiveness, rather than continuing on any level to ignore that terrible harm that had come to an entire people, God's people. Granted that some of her family members were not on board with 
emphasizes, this documentary was not made to shame anyone. But since her parents raised her to do her civic duty, she also saw this as an extension of her parents' teaching. So, with the blessing of her grandmother, she made the documentary, persuading several members of her family to make the epic journey with her. As someone put it, making a documentary involving family skeletons is very personal and very emotional. Folks, this is a must-see film for all of us. However, don't lose the lesson Jesus is teaching here. This family, through one of its members, Katrina Brown, is modeling for us one of the many lessons in today's gospel that Jesus is encouraging us to learn. As the gospel reads, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser. Ms. Katrina Brown and approximately 20 <coughs> members of her family completed this rather painful journey to Ghana and back in an effort, Ghana and back, in an effort to begin the healing process for so many that were separated from their families and whose lives are forever changed. Yes, it will be a tough process, but then Jesus has never told us that our lives will be easy. On this journey of discovery, this family encountered many people from this area of Africa who have forgiven and embraced them in their need to begin the process for open dialogue and ultimately reconciliation, however long it takes. Absalom Jones was one of those slaves brought from the shores of Africa in 1746 to live and work as a slave to a wealthy Anglican planter in Delaware. It is said that he was a young boy working in the fields when his owner, Abraham Winkoo, recognized that he was an intelligent child and ordered that he be trained to work in the house. He was taught to read and write, and years later, after purchasing his freedom and that of his spouse, he was ordained as the first black deacon and later as the first black priest in the Anglican Church. He denounced slavery and warned the slave owners of those who encouraged slavery that God always acted on behalf of the oppressed and distressed. It is told that when the whites were running from the yellow fever outbreak in Philadelphia, he was running towards those afflicted in an attempt to help in any way possible. For this and many other contributions which he has made in his, had made in his lifetime, the Episcopal Church now honors Absalom Jones with his own feast day every February 13th. See, we just had one. This week's reading follows the Beatitudes to, to form the Sermon on the Mount. It does not contain any parables or miracle narratives, just straightforward teaching of lessons for us to inculcate, for us to learn. In his own way, Jesus is not here to contradict the laws in the Torah. Instead, he is supporting and augmenting the laws by his internalization of them, so that it is not only the letter of the law that matters, but our behaviors, folks. As Professor Amy Ogden of St. Peter, St. Paul's School of Theology claims, Jesus connects the dots for his listeners from outward acts to internal orientation, from murder to anger, from adultery to lust. The professor continues, we can pat ourselves on the back for not committing adultery, and yet create primary relationships with work, sports, or even the internet, rather than our spouses. The notion that we must reconcile with anyone who has something against us before we give our gifts to God stops us in our tracks. During Epiphany, 
we can be comforted that we have a living God incarnate among us who is willing to enter the messiness of our lives in every aspect. As with the old family, seeking to heal and to save. A God that offers to shine God's light in every nook and cranny, allowing us to face whatever skeletons we may have in our closets. I got some. The professor declares that, quote, we proclaim a God present in the flesh and bone of our lives, but not a keeper of checklists. The good news is that Jesus has given us a new way of life, not rejecting the traditional laws, but building upon them. This new way of life, as the good professor puts it, demands more and promises more. It is life abundant. It is a life that needs God to lead us and to guide us every step of the way. And our God is always willing and able to do so. So in this month, where we learn more about black history and where I learn more about my history and the history of Afri the African diaspora, how it came to be. We are reminded by the stories of Saint Absalom Jones and Miss Katrina Brown and the DeWolf family, that if we allow God to shine God's light in our closets, God can begin a healing in each and every one of us. And let the beloved community of believers 